Hey everyone, welcome back to Drawbridge Finance. My name is Levi Woods and this is an opinion channel about finances. One of the goals of my channel is to create conversation about finances and about what I'm doing with my finances, what other people are doing with theirs, and to see if we're, we're on the right track to building long-term wealth. Because I see a lot of people getting ripped off out there, they're just either not paying enough attention or they are you know, being misguided by banks and people that are trying to make money off them rather than making their finances make the best money that they can in the given time frame. So I encourage you guys all to write in questions, leave comments, whatever you'd like. If we want to have a conversation, that's what this channel is about. So today I'm going to cover a question from one of the viewers that's been watching my channel for a while. So today's question comes from Justin. He says, I have a request for a video which would look at historical data for an ETF versus dividend stock portfolios. I'd like to see how the outcomes would have compared between my sample ETF portfolio versus your sample dividend stock portfolio over, say, the past five to 10 years. I'm not looking for financial advice, aka which stocks to buy, but rather looking for insights as to onto where my simple strategy might fall short. I have a portfolio created solely from freely offered ETFs from Fidelity, the goal being to have a diversified portfolio with the fewest fees. Watching your series, I'm convinced of the merits of dividend stocks, but I'd like to know how it compares to what I'm doing. Here is a sample ETF portfolio composed of 90% stocks and 10% bonds. Having no familiarity with these at all, I can say with certainty that this is a, a very well laid out plan, having 90% stocks and 10% bonds. I would assume that you're probably fairly young if you've got 90% stocks, 10% bonds. You know, typically, as we move forward in age, people tend to bump the bonds up and the stocks down. But I think in this bullish market, we're probably pretty safe to continue with uh, stocks being 90% of the portfolio if, if you have a few years before you need to start pulling this money out. Okay, let's get into the meat of this. Now, Justin's portfolio is, is a mock portfolio. And what I've done is I've created, I've given a line to each of the ETFs that he's decided to purchase. What we need to do is calculate out how much the value of this portfolio would be based on the weighting that he's provided. So the first thing we're going to fill out, I'm going to build a little chart that fills out information on the, the value of each of these going back to 2006. And I'm going to pull that data from Yahoo Finance. So let's look at the very, very last column, which is today's value. So this would be the values of the week ending December 15th, 2017. And you can see that the value of IVV is 269, the value of IJH is 188, IJR 76, so on and so forth. Then what I've done is I've, based on the weighting that he wanted to do, he said that he wants to invest 45% into IVV, 9% in IJH, 9% in IJR. So what, what I used, I used that math to calculate out kind of a average price of what this would be per unit as a you know theoretical mutual fund a self-made mutual fund and you can see that if i put 45 percent in into a value of 269 nine percent into a value of 188 we get this number we get this uh, unit value of 167 dollars now if i use that calculation and i look at the the historical rates for each of these going back in time i can get a comparative value over the total amount of this portfolio all of this data here is is the actual values from December of each year. So $142 would have been the value of IVV in December of 2006. In 2007, IVV would have been worth $146. Now, of course, some of these ETFs didn't actually exist. Like IUSB didn't actually start until 2014. So there was no data before that. So what I had to do was change the weighting of uh, the money invested so that we still had 100% invested. They just divide this 10% that would have been in IUSB. We'll divide that and put 2.5% into each of these to make up that difference, that 10%. Subsequently, I had to do the same prior to 2012, and I had to take this weighting of 29.5% and divide it across these three other holdings. So looking back, at 2006, we would have 57% of the portfolio in IVV, 21.4, and 21.4 in IJH and IJR. What this does is it gives us this mutual fund value. And because we've been in a bull market, we can see that there's growth for the last nine years since 2008. The, the value of this theoretical mutual fund has gone from $67 to 85, 98, 98, 99, 126, 130, 127, 141, and 167. 
So we can see pretty easily where we've had dips. In 2015, the market was down a little bit. In 2008, the market was down a lot. So now let's do a percentage comparison and see what year-over-year percentage-wise we saw as gain. So we'll take $105 in 2006, going into 2007, what is this increase? We'll add a line here. So the total ETF had an increase of 3.4% from 2006 to 2007. Then from 2008, it went from 109 to $67. We can see that the ETF, this portfolio dropped 37.9% in value. 2009, it went up 25%, and we see these gains. So now we've got something to compare to. So the whole point of this question is whether or not this ETF portfolio would compare well to a dividend portfolio. And of course, I can pull up the data from my dividend portfolios, my personal ones, the real ones, and I will compare. So this first one invested with an advisor. So this is a professionally managed investment portfolio. The line right here is my RSP, and this line is the TFSA. And the RSP I've held for a long time, so you can see that in 2007, I actually had a negative return. Now, one of the things that has happened with me is that my value wasn't actually very high. And because it was professionally managed, because I had minimum investment amounts that I had to put in, I actually had lower returns some years or greater returns some years because I was not diversified as much as I probably should have been in these first years of investing. So when there was a, a downturn in a specific stock, that affected my portfolio more or less. Um, and that's, you know, in 2007, there was just one or two stocks that went down quite a bit, and that's what really changed the value of that. But you can see some correlation as we go through. In 2008, the ETFs went down 37%. My dividend portfolio went down 33%. This is very much an expected outcome. My dividend portfolio will always drop less than the market in total because the dividend payout itself actually retains some value. So dividend portfolios will always outperform on a downturn. Subsequently, they won't recover as much in an up year. So both this year, the my dividend portfolio going down less and then making less in 2009 are, are both expected outcomes. In 2010, we can see both up. Uh, 2011, we can see both down a little bit. 2012, my RSP portfolio was up quite a bit, but in 2013, the ETF portfolio returned quite well. And this does not surprise me at all. Like comparing these three accounts, we can see that twice the ETF portfolio was the winner and four times the dividend portfolio was the winner. Um, we're not talking about huge discrepancies here. Um, I do manage my portfolios quite a lot, and I, I'm very specific about what I pick. So there, there can be some better returns, but not always. You can see the ETFs went up 18.5% this year, and my portfolio has only gone up 6.3 and 7.9. So overall, the expected outcome on an ETF is around 7.5%, and the dividend stock portfolio, I aim for 7% dividend. So I'm going to get that in theory over time. So to crunch the numbers, really difficult to actually get the specific amount on this ETF because I'm using generalized numbers from only data that's from December of each of the years. So I'm going to say that the return was somewhere between 6 and 9% return, which is a really great return. This is a very smart investing, low fees, and returns consistently a 6 to 9% return, somewhere in that range. Now comparing in that time frame, my specific accounts returned 5.8% per year and 16.3% return. All right, well, that was really interesting. So now that we've looked at this, I, I started to think to myself, I'm like, well, what happened? What would happen? Like, I know that these are, Justin's plan was very, very solid. He was going to make around a 7% return and, and he can project into the future what he's making. But I wanted to look at it comparatively to what my portfolio actually did. So I did some, some off-camera number crunching. I went back through my portfolio, back to 2003, and I kind of did like a what-if scenario. And I said, well, what, what if when I had put in my lump sum payments, if I put $3,000 into my RSP, what if I instead had put it into Justin's model? And what would the numbers look like? Well, of course... That back projection, we know that they're going to be very, very similar. But which one had the competitive edge? Um, and when it all came down, once I had gone through and spent the time to do that, which did take a little bit of time, uh, I found that my dividend portfolio had just slightly outperformed the ETF portfolio. Uh, the 
The thing that I can attribute that to is because a dividend portfolio is more specific, I had the advantage of being able to like specifically pick stocks that were at a low point. When you're playing ETFs because they're on the, the market, uh, you aren't necessarily buying at a low time. So you don't have the advantage of buying low as much. Um, so o overall, um, the dividend portfolios that I had outperformed the ETF portfolio over an 11-year period, 11 year period by 7.7%, which is not a very big difference, really. It means that you know on a on a hundred thousand dollar portfolio, um, my my actual dividend portfolio would have outperformed this theoretical ETF portfolio by about seven and a half thousand dollars. So not a huge huge difference over eleven years. So Justin, I think in my opinion, I think this portfolio is amazing. You're going to do a great job, and this is going to be able to easily project into the future. You will know where your wealth is going and at what year you're going to be able to retire. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Let's get rich together.